Keep away from Pumpkinhead, unless you're tired of living. His enemies are mostly dead, he's mean and unforgiving. Laugh at him and you're undone, but in some dreadful fashion, vengeance he considers fun and plans it with a passion. Time will not erase a blot, a plot that he has brewing. It's when you think that he's forgot, he'll conjure your undoing. Bolted doors and windows barred, guard dogs prowling in the yard, won't protect you in your bed. Nothing will from Pumpkinhead. The following podcast contains spoilers for Pumpkinhead. You have been warned! <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Ed Hardy. First, we got our beautiful host, Glenjamin Button, along with your host, Miguel Magusto. Ed Hardy. Ed Hardy. Ed Hardy. <coughs> How you doing, Glenn? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome, Miguel. How are you, my scantilous clad of a man? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm living, living the daily being scared of the Spooktober that we have the here. The Spooktober. Ooh, yes, my... episode one of six of our Spooktober. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spooktacular. spooktober tacular, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. But before we get into the first movie of the Spooktacular, Glenn, what movies have you watched this week? <laughs> you act like I do things. Like watch movies. <laughs> Sadly, I did not watch any movies, but uh, but this week's Pumpkinhead. Uh, I think I've been watching a show and playing some Minecraft with my boys. So I've been pretty busy on that. Noise. Uh, so besides watching Pumpkinhead, I carved a lot of pumpkins in the game of Minecraft. So besides well, that, there you go. What did you watch, silly man? Well, I watched a total of uh three movies. Um. Pumpkinhead being the first of the three. Uh, then I watched, uh, for those of you who listened last week, I watched the film The Eyes of Tammy Faye mm-hmm. uh, with Je- uh, Jessica Chastain. This week I watched the documentary that that is based on, also called The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Um, it's, it, it feels like a TV-made documentary, so it's not like super great, but it's fine. It's got a lot of cool information. Uh, the movie's better. But the movie is still just okay, so I think it's just not as interesting of a story as, you know, some people think it is. And you know what? It's fine. They're allowed to think it's interesting, but to me, it's not that interesting. Uh, But, yeah, that was the documentary. Then today, I watched an absolutely batshit insane movie, which made me realize that, yes, what many people say about me is true. I do watch some weird shit from time to time. <laughs> Just from time to time, absolutely. Just I sent you a clip of, of what I was watching. Uh, Agony. Oh, what a time we had together. What a time. It's called Agony, The Life and Death of Rasputin. It is a Russian film from 1981. As the title suggests, it's about the life and death of Rasputin. It is not a documentary. It's a film uh, who is, which is directed um, by, where is his face? Where's his Where is face? Uh, Elam Klimov, who uh, many will know from the film Come and See. Uh, he did this about three years before Come and See. Uh, and is starring uh, po- quite possibly the best casting for Rasputin, mm. uh, Alexei Petrenko. Um, I think that's who plays Rasputin. But he is, he, he is damn near a spitting image of him with the hair and makeup that they put on him as well. Yeah. Um, but it's a really interesting film. Very artistic. My only problem is that it's two and a half hours long. Well, two hours, 20 minutes, but still, uh, it does, it does not need that. You can cut a lot of the beginning. It gets a little too much into the history of the Romanov family, the, uh, the, uh, monarchs of the, um, Russian empire back when Rasputin was, you know, part of it. Uh, and he was very close with the Romanovs, so like I understand going into it a little bit, but they go into it a lot. Oh yeah, and it takes a good thirty, forty minutes before Rasputin's even in the picture. Um, <laughs> so it kind of takes a while to get going, but once it gets going, it's really good. And uh, yeah, it's it's incredible. It's a incredible film once Rasputin's involved. It just takes a while to get there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those three are the only ones that I watched. Um, okay. I don't have any news for this week. Do you? 
I've got some uh, a little bit of goofy news, um, a little bit of <laughs> weird news that I was not expecting in the slightest. Um, so Super Mario is uh, coming out with an animated oh, yes. movie. Yes, I, and, I meant uh, to write that down, but forgot. And, and they released the cast, which is not a cast at all in any way, sort of way that I expected to be a cast, especially no. for the animated movie when the guy who you know plays Mario does most of the voices. So this this was the biggest uh, surprise for me was Chris Pratt as Mario does not um, fit at all does not fit but we I mean we know he he plays Emmett in Lego Movie you know well he, there's no doubt that he has the voice acting skills yeah I just can't see him I can't see Mario without Mario's voice yeah and I can't see Chris Pratt doing a Mario impression yes yeah, so it's it's gonna be interesting when that comes around Anya Taylor yeah. Joy is gonna play uh, Peach or is it Anya. Anya Taylor, An- whatever Anya, you Anya, actually say her name. It's Anya Taylor Joy, yeah. Uh, one that I was surprised and actually happy with was Charlie Day's Luigi. That's oh, gonna yeah. be that's hilarious. the best casting. Um, um, I gotta send you a clip. It's it's fucking hilarious of uh, Charlie in the mail room and they just put Luigi's <laughs> hat on him. <laughs> He's like, "Listen here, it. Mario, you got." I <laughs> love it. Um, uh, Jack Black is Bowser, which I'm. I, I'm I, I like that. It's, with. it's gonna be weird, but I like that. I uh, like that casting. Keegan Michael Key, I like a lot as Toad. I think that's goofy. Yeah. Um, and then this one uh, is weird to me. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Uh, I j- you can't not imagine uh, Donkey Kong pounding on his chest, going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's it's yeah a picture in your head. So there's there's a weird casting for you. Yeah. And the uh, the animated Mario movie that's coming out, uh, I believe, in December 2022? Yeah, I'd be surprised. Usually, uh, I mean, it used to take years for an animated movie once they recorded the voices. Mm-hmm. So they used to know the, the casting like four or five years before it was released. Now I think they got things down a little bit more to a science. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, December next year sounds about right. But, and who knows? They might have recorded already. So maybe. Who knows? Yeah. So knows? Uh, so there's that. There's yeah. that little piece. Uh, well, I guess that's the only news we got for today because I got lickety split. So mm-hmm. let's get into Pumpkinhead. Afraid raising the dead ain't within my power. Will it be all right? Should I be afraid? It's coming! <laughs> Looking for an old woman. She lives somewhere in the mountains hereabouts. All she can do is take you straight to hell. You go home and you bury your boy. Some folks will say is how she's got powers. Who are you? Ed Harley. What do you want, Ed Harley? Sad. You're looking for vengeance. Vengeance. Sad. There's no graveyard way back deep in them woods. The thing you're looking for is in there. It was an accident. After a tragic accident, a man conjures up a towering, vengeful demon called Pumpkinhead to destroy a group of unsuspecting teenagers. Just like last week, that was crisp, that was clean, no stuttering, no stumbling. I'm amazing. (laughs) I'm amazed for you. I honestly am looking for... Yeah, I put this award somewhere that I want to oh, give you thank after you. that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, directed by Stan Winston. It is uh, written by Stan Winston, Winston Mark Patrick Carducci, uh, and based on the poem by Ed Justin. It is starring Lance Hedrickson, or Hedrickson, sorry, Jeff East, John Dacchino, and Kimberly Ross. And, uh, yeah, I picked this because it is a, you know, a cult classic mm-hmm. horror movie that I've been meaning to watch for a while, but, you know, horror, especially 80s horror, is not really my shtick. Um, 
But I got to tell you, I was very impressed with this film from the get go. Like, I, I think it 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 starts off with a bang with the uh, the flashback to when um, Lance Henriksen's kid is a character and kind of building that lore of understanding <laughs> character as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm I meant like showing that like people in the mountains know who Pumpkinhead is and they know not to answer the door. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, but I, I, the atmosphere from the film is just so great from the, the beginning. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. Mm-hmm. I, I remember seeing this. I remember saying last time, I remember seeing this all the fucking time in a VHS cover, just like pumpkin head with, you know, with the, with a giant pumpkin on the front, you know, mm-hmm. I've always seen it. I've never watched it. Um, so this is, this is definitely one that when you brought it up, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> blast from the past. Brendan Fraser walks in. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, I was, I had knew nothing about this movie, just that alone. And mm-hmm. was a, dear Lord, we're finally getting to it. And it's amazing. Yeah. Um, See, so yeah, right off the bat, you're right. I think I think the uh, the lore and the story of it was definitely the uh, the strongest for me, at least. Um, and it's just the world building around it was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, just in the just the lore of Pumpkinhead, and you know, and the the old haggard lady, who's what's her name? Was it actually Haggard or something like that? <laughs> haggard, um, Haggis, Haggis, yes, Haggis, um, the great Scottish. I believe that's a Scottish dish. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, sheep stomach. Yeah. Um, but which, which fits this lady very well. It's yeah. a great name for her. Whoever like, named her when she was a small child really knew what she was. It was very <laughs> befitting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like the world building for this was definitely the, easily the best part of it for me. Um, and dare I say, and a lot of people are going to hit me with some pumpkins after I say this. I would love to see a remake of this. Some, oh, I I one hundred percent agree. Not that with it, some it, with some practical effect justice, mm-hmm. absolutely. I think this would be a great remake. But yeah. we should uh, more talk about the movie itself. But <laughs> I don't think a remake is needed. But I think it could really be elevated in a way. Yeah, if I, mean, they I mainly stick- say it because they they did like pull like their punches with a lot of like kind of punching and acting in a way. Yeah. Or maybe not punching, like um like pushes and falls and stuff like that. They they kind of held back on those just obviously so nobody gets hurt and like safety reasons, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But uh like it would definitely be better if, you know, people committed to like falling and stuff like that or just yeah. full full acting from me at least, you know. It's yeah. just, just my silly little opinion. I wouldn't want them to change much. I don't no, want, no, no, I, no. I would not want it modernized like Yes, it can take place in present day, but make it in a place where there's no cell phone reception. Oh yeah, because uh, because the I, I feel like or even it's just, just got to take place in the '80s again. Like it's yeah, just, or just take place in the '80s again. Yeah. Um, but you know, r- right off the bat, after they come to present day, uh, and they they introduce you to Ed Harley and his son, uh, who what's his son's name, um, Billy Billy Harley Billy um, Harley. It was just like such a beautiful relationship that they had that they did. They built their relationship in such a short amount of time where you actually care. Uh, I mean, obviously, you would care about a kid dying no matter mm-hmm. how long you knew them, but you cared mm-hmm. about his pain as well. Yeah. Uh, in, in such a short amount of time. So uh, they, they did. They, they built the characters really quickly. Um you know, for for eighties horror movies, especially eighties horror movies, are generally known as for their schlock, and they're loved for their schlock. Where like you don't really give a shit about the characters. If anything, you want them to die. Yeah, well, you absolutely um, want them to die. <laughs> like the teenage, some of the teenagers in this. Yeah. Um. But uh, and that goes to another thing. Like, yes, it had the trope of like the shitty teenagers. Mm-hmm. But I loved the fact that it was really only one and a half because the the girl that uh, Joel was with. Joel being the the guy that hit the kid with the dirt bike mm-hmm. and the girl that he was with not really giving him any pushback. Um, she's the half, but Joel is like, they're the real shitheads. At least everyone else tried to help. Yeah. Uh, they did a horrible job at trying yeah, to help. a terrible job. <laughs> but like they were trying to own up to it and, yeah. and everything. Um, but, you know, the – the I, I was really worried when he started driving around with his dead son. I thought it was going to turn into like a pet cemetery thing. Mm-hmm. Um where you know 
pumpkin head would co- go kill the person that killed him. It'd be like a soul for a soul kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and his kid would come back to life. And I'm really glad that that's not what happened. Same. Um, Cause I feel like that would have cheapened it. The, the fact that, you know, it, it would make his wanting vengeance more understandable. It's like, Hey, you're going to get your kid back. Yeah. I'll absolutely, absolutely kill these kids. Mm-hmm. But it, it made his pain more, um, more relatable and palpable um, from, from uh you know him knowing that he's not going to get his kid back he just wants revenge yeah and then it also was a seamless transition for him realizing that you know what this isn't going to bring him back i kind of fucked up let me yeah, try to, I, I let me try help. to do right by this i gotta help these stupid kids yeah um and, and it, it's just a i did not expect an 80s monster horror movie to have this much emotion in it like it really the 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 biggest takeaway for me is that i'm just shocked at how complete of a film it is it's not just a gore gore film it's not mm-hmm. just a a lore film it's, it's not you know you know there's no nudity in it at all which is shocking for an 80s horror movie yeah <laughs> and it's just it's it's just a great film from head to toe i just i i'm i was baffled that i enjoyed it as much there were points where i was just like I was expecting it to turn one way and then it, it would just change uh, change directions or continue on the path that I didn't see before. It, it, I, I was just, you know, blown away more or less. It, it's I was way more invested in this than I thought I would be. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely definitely seems like I'm, I'm happy for you, honestly. Yeah. It's really not easy to get you uh, liking like horror movies and especially yeah, I, 80s horror movies. Yeah, I mean, I, I would most of my favorite movies are horror films. Mm hmm. But they're what people. There's few and far between. I don't the call one. them this, but there are people who call them elevated horror, yeah. where they're more emotionally driven, and they're not just based on gore. They're more psychological or more emotional or what mm-hmm. have you. Whereas this is gore, but it also has the emotion that is needed for me to connect with the story. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I just was not expecting that. So I like. I don't like what people think of horror. Yeah. When they they hear the word horror. Like all the gore uh, for no reason, all the jump scares. I don't like that horror, but if it's a solid human story where with scares thrown in, I love those kinds of movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. From I mean, from what I read, this was a great film to just be a part of as uh, far as like uh, Stan Winston being the director and how uh, at least some of the actors, at least like little tales that they told uh, in the movie trivia here, they, uh, they he was just a great director. Always made them feel comfortable, and you know, never uh, was harsh or anything like that. And just made you feel good about just being in the movie. And uh, uh, with Lance Henriksen, the you were talking about the scene where like the kid and him are in the car, and the kids obviously, you know six feet under but mm-hmm. not in the car oh. obviously yeah <laughs> um the he, euphemism but not yeah, the literal he, uh, meaning he of the actually, euphemism lance actually was like he signed up for that scene after he read it apparently it's a powerful scene it is and like what, what what does he even say he's like uh what have you done dad or something like that and that's that's when he was like well i'm I, give me i'm in I'm, I'm yeah. part of it. I, I think that's really cool. Just the, a lot of the compassion in this movie is clearly shown, and yeah. you know, just the fun that they had with it, which yeah. is a key part of any movie. If you're gonna, and the you thing know, is, make like, one. even the witch character, like obviously Pumpkinhead is the villain of this. He is an unstoppable force mm-hmm. that is only created by human a human need or want for vengeance. Uh, the witch in this is is very neutral to the whole thing like she's not like oh yes let's let's get those sons of bitches she's like hey this is gonna fuck you up this is gonna mm-hmm. fuck them up this is not a good idea are you I'll sure do it. it hard yeah yeah so like it, it's the fact that there's no one even joel redeems himself somewhat not not enough mm-hmm. but he, he he redeems himself somewhat and it, it, just the the characters overall, there's not a single character in this where it's just over the top evil. Uh, Joel even has motivation for being the way he is. Uh, it's still shitty, mm-hmm. uh, but as we know from current events, I'm not going to mention which one, but there are people who are selfish like that uh, right now, and so it's it's a very believable thing and a very human thing, and and. Um, you never turn to liking him quite 
that well. You're still kind of glad when he dies, mm -hmm. but it's still just like, you know what? I was hard on him at the beginning, and, and you don't want him to get away, but you're just like, okay, I don't want him dead as much as I did before. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just love that. It, he, and I completely could see Lance Henriksen reading that scene and just being like, this is a complex character uh, and a complex story where, mm -hmm. you know, it's the the moral uh, logistics of vengeance. And I absolutely loved it. I was not expecting that from Sam Winston. Yeah. Um, granted, I've never, uh, other than his, his special effects films, I haven't really seen anything that he's done. Mm -hmm. I think um, there's, there's one thing that bothered me about the pumpkin head creature itself was the fact that, I mean, uh, it, it to me resembled a little too much of a xenomorph um and i wish it didn't but yeah that was, I, I could see that I, again just me it's just my opinion i'm sorry mm -hmm. if you really like it um but the the thing with the creature that i, I think i loved so much is that it had this psychological connection with lance henriksen's character oh yeah ed harley and that it's just like every time like he felt this like presence like come over him and that the creature was getting close he like kind of passed out or was getting doozy and stuff like mm. so it had that connection of like that vengeance from ed um that was just taking over and whenever the creature rolled up which which was really cool i really genuinely liked it i thought like he was like he was in control of the creature the whole time every time he passed out and he would just take over the creatures like you know yeah, kind of um, like a malignant situation yeah, <laughs> yeah which uh, which i thought I thought was cool when I'm glad it wasn't exactly like that. And instead yeah. it was just, you know, those two forces getting too close. You know, one kind of yeah. gets pushed a little bit and passes the fuck out while the other one takes over. <laughs> yeah. One thing um, I absolutely loved about the pumpkin head design is his face. Pumpkin head's face in the beginning is completely different than it is at the end. In the end, it takes more yeah, of a, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ed Harley. Like his face begins to look like Lance mm -hmm. Henriksen's. Uh, which a brilliant, brilliant detail there that something, you know, I was not expecting. Yeah, it's the evolution that. of the creature as it's exactly. going on. And it's yeah. it's so cool because in the beginning, it's like early beginning. Like he, he, it's like a little baby. Little mm -hmm. baby pops out. Next thing you know, it's like an adult, like immediately. And then it's hunting these, these kids. The more it's on screen, the more cool it looks yeah. you know the more i get over the fact that it looks like a xenomorph and the more it looks like ed is more i'm like respecting how first off practical a yeah. always gets a bonus mm -hmm. um b how practical it was and how fucking cool they made it evolve throughout mm -hmm. the film the more it was on screen and such yeah so yeah this, uh, that part killed it and you know stan winston he's good for that he is good and, for uh, that well and he shows it he does show it. Uh, I think one way they could have made this better uh, with the character of Joel, um, and, and they kind of do it towards the end, but like I, I feel like if they focused on his perspective over uh, Steve's perspective, because it's primarily told for, through Steve's perspective once Steven, out of the teenagers. Stephen Tracy. Stephen Tracy, yeah. Once, once the... Uh, um, the shit what's his um the, once a kid dies mm -hmm. it's daily they're like the the primary uh primary um teenagers and then once they die it switches to i believe it's maggie and chris or kim and chris kim and might chris. be kim and chris um maggie's the one that gets murked on the that, forehead that's right that's right uh i do i think it is it would have been better to focus on Joel's arc, have him actually, kind of... I don't even know. It, they're all over the place. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> but, uh, like, focus on his his remorse, because, you know, he, he, he obviously feels bad about it, even though he's doing the completely wrong thing by holding his friends hostage and not letting them call the police or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like if we sh were shown more of what he did instead of just told through Steve's perspective, it could have been more powerful and more understanding. And it really created a, a more um, complete film with the suspense of, hey, you, you know what? This guy did a bad thing, but he's human. He's, he doesn't deserve to die. He... he Deserves to go to jail, but he doesn't deserve to die. Yeah. Um, I feel like that could have made 
when Pumpkinhead came along, a lot more suspenseful uh, of, you know, who are they going to kill, who are they not going to kill, um, instead of just, like, you know, flat teenagers throughout the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I really love this overall. It's, it's way better. And the dog doesn't die. Yeah, actually, that's one thing. I'm glad you said something that you wanted. I wanted to talk about. This this fucked me up. This fucked me up, man. Because mm-hmm. obviously, dogs, you know, being a part of films, it gets scary. But it, it really is scary, scary when uh, your childhood, uh, you know, when you grew up with a dog named Gypsy, and of course, this dog Ooh. is named Gypsy, and I'm sitting there I'm like, Ooh, don't you <laughs> fucking do it? Don't you kill Gypsy? <laughs> don't you kill Gypsy? Uh, bitch already died once. I don't need it to happen again. <laughs> uh, no, it was. <laughs> No, it was, uh, it was it was cool to see like somebody else would name a dog Gypsy first off. Yeah, and, you know that the fucking dog survived in this goddamn yeah. movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was. I'm glad they didn't, you know, resort to doing that. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, I don't really have too much more to say about this. It, it just really took me off guard how much I enjoyed this. I mm-hmm. knew I was probably going to enjoy it a little bit, you know, just from the sh- the schlock standpoint. Yeah. But this is up there with one of my, uh, you know, I, I rated it a three and a half out I of five, it. but I might, you know, that that was just kind of like me rating it when I was tired mm-hmm. talking about it. I, I kind of want to make it at least a four, if not a four and a half. Um, you know, it's, it's for for the kind of horror movie it is, it's a masterpiece in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, compared to like, you know, some of the, quote unquote elevated horror it's still not up there but for like a, a, sh- a gory monster movie i was extremely impressed with this that's good uh, yes. that's, that's pretty much all i've got to say as well so yes. i'm ready when you are all right so that does it for our review that brings us to the judgment does Pumpkinhead become a little shelf boy with the likes of apostle and handmaiden because this was my pick i go first uh you know i i ranted and raved about this uh I think just with how much it shocked me at how high quality it was in the story, not even in the in the 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 production, but the story of it was so much better than I thought it did. So that alone, I would say yes, it deserves to be on the shelf. But then you got like the cool design of Pumpkinhead turning into uh, Lance Henriksen's face. It's just a really cool concept overall, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I loved it. So I, I would say it does become a shelf boy. All right, I was uh, I was hesitant on what I wanted to do here mm-hmm. because um, before talking about it, I was like, I, I knew it was a good movie. Obviously, we we yeah. talked about that for sure. But it was, uh, in no offense to the actors themselves, it was kind of lackluster as far as acting itself. Oh, I, I would agree with that. It was you know horror acting, so. <laughs> You Lance only, Henriksen does great, but everyone no, else yeah, is got like... Lance Henriksen's yeah. great. Even the little boy is great. He's a very fucking innocent child. Yeah. Um, but obviously the acting was was a little rough. But everything else, everything we talked about after I watched it was great. And I honestly, I probably wasn't going to put it before we talked about it. But now I think after we did, I think I think it goes on. There I we think go. it does. Yeah. I, I am more or less just taken aback by mm-hmm. like... I, I, I was going into this with high expectations, and it still beat my high expectations. So oh, Perfect. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. So with that being said, Pumpkinhead does become a little shelf boy with the likes of Apostle and Handmaiden. We're going to slap it right on there. Bada bing. In the cobweb section, but we're not going to wipe the cobwebs away because it's our because spooktacular. Because it's fitting. It's, it's our spooktacular, fitting. yes. It's the spoopy season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that brings us to our plugs for this week. My plug... Uh, Last week I did a movie trailer. This week I am also doing a movie trailer because Paul Thomas Anderson came out with a his movie trailer for Licorice Pizza, uh, which is his newest film uh, coming out sometime this year, probably like November December area, uh, starring Bradley Cooper, Sean Penn, Skyler Gasando, John C. Riley, Maya Rudolph. Uh, But the big thing here for me Mm -hmm. uh, is that Cooper Hoffman. Son of the late great Philip Seymour Hoffman and current uh, frequent collaborator with Paul Thomas Anderson is in this, and not only is he in this, but he is one of like the lead kid parts, yeah, or the lead teenager parts. And I knew he was going to be in it. I knew last year when they started production that he was going to be in it. But seeing the trailer, and he is all over this trailer. 
it just made me so happy. His dad is like it, wherever he he is is just looking at him with a big ass smile on his face. Just it, it's beautiful, really. It that Paul Thomas Anderson beautiful. would cast his friend's son, his late friend's son, in in such a big role, uh, one of his first roles too, if not his first role. So yeah, my my uh, plug is the trailer for Licorice Pizza. <laughs> It's a god awful small affair To the girl with the mousy hair I'm at the girl I'm gonna marry one day But her mummy is yelling no And her daddy has told her to go Listen young lady But her friend is nowhere to be seen So how'd you become such a hot shot actor? She walks through her I'm a showman, that's what I meant to do to the seat with the clearest view wow, 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 wow. And she's hooked to the silver screen Do you know who I am? Yeah Do you know uh, who my girlfriend is? Barbara Streisand? Barbara Streisand Sand Sand, yeah, like sands Like the ocean, like beaches. Barbara Streisand? <sighs> no, but Streisand Sand You know, just great story Overall, the, mm-hmm. the production of it. We don't know how the movie's going to be. Yeah, we Paul shall Thomas see. Paul Thomas Anderson, it's probably going to be at least somewhat good. Yeah. Uh, but Licorice Pizza trailer, and that is on YouTube, Universal Pictures mm-hmm. YouTube oh, channel. Perfect, my boy. Yes. Uh, we're going to slide over to a different section of entertainment, and we're going straight to the music. Mm. Uh, a band that I really like um, <laughs> named Bill Murray, which is funny <laughs> all on its own, but it's yeah. spelled completely different. B-I-L-M-U-R-I. Just released a new like album. It's very short. It's like 20, 25 minutes or so. Uh, called Four Hundred Pound Back Squat. Mm. And uh, lately, Bill Murray, he, when he released, uh, when he's been releasing his latest albums, like he's just been so memey as far as like the artwork and like the music videos and everything goes. And it's so funny just to you know watch them. Um, but my plug's gonna be Four Hundred Pound Back Squat. I I think it's amazing. I think all of his work's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's going to be Bill Murray on uh, any really music uh, platform you got. Yes. <laughs> Spotify for me. Can't remember when they rose, stuck in my skin. It never feels like you know. No, I feel nothing. And it keeps wearing me down. Still in my soul again. So that is that. Those are our plugs for this week. That brings us to our assignment for next week. Glenjamin Bunn, it is mm-hmm. your turn to pick for week two of the KFR Spooktacular. All right. Yes, this is perfect. I am going to pick a movie that I um, have somewhere in the back of my mind for years and years, and I finally found it. I didn't know what it was before. All I remember is one certain scene at the end of the movie, and I want to rewatch it because I want to I want to know if it lived up to that one scene that I remember, and it's the mm-hmm. only thing that I remember about it. So this could be bad for both of us, <laughs> but I know it's a horror film. It's a Western horror film. I'm pretty sure it takes place during, like, the Civil War. Mm. Um, so could be interesting on that part. Um, so it's going to be called Dead Birds. In this place. Look at this. Any of this mean anything to you? You are not alone. Who's there? You are not welcome. You are not leaving. I've opened the door. Where did you put the body? We need to get out of here. We are not leaving here without go. <laughs> what the hell happened here? Tell me if there's someone else in this house. Came out in 2004, rated R, an hour and a half film. Um, 
Dead Birds, a group of Confederate soldiers hole up in an abandoned plantation after robbing a bank and finding themselves at the mercy of supernatural forces. Uh, directed by Alex Turner, written by Simon Barrett, stars Henry Thomas, uh, Patrick Fuggett, uh, Nikki <laughs> Acox and uh, <laughs> and Pretty Michael sure Fugit, but I get and, wrong. Uh, and Michael Shannon is in there as well. Oh, Michael Shannon and Henry Thomas. Yeah, uh, of ED, uh, Mark Boone Mark Jr. Boone Jr. So Isaiah Washington. It's it's got an interesting. Oh, oh my goodness! Guess who was in this? Mm. Guess who was in this? Mm. Brian Bremer, yeah, who we just watched a movie. <laughs> we did movie just watch. He, he was in Pumpkinhead. He played Bunt in, in Pumpkinhead. Mm-hmm. So look at this man getting a double feature. Getting a double uh-huh. feature, Brian and Bremer. We yeah, did that no, on purpose. We totally did. And I got to look up real quick what platforms those are on. It's on Pluto, Tubi, Vudu, Amazon Prime, and obviously the rest. They're like ones you actually have to rent from but those are the ones are that I also named IMDb are f- TV yes and those are the ones uh, the ones that I named are the ones that are for free if you have a, yes. at least a subscription with Prime so yes Dead Birds 2004 rated R wonderful. should be should be very interesting wonderful that mm-hmm. is our assignment for next week thank you everyone for listening as always you can check out our website at www.keystonefilmreview.com on Instagram keystone underscore film underscore review Twitter keystone underscore film Facebook, Keystone Film Review, YouTube, Keystone Film Review, TikTok, Keystone Film Review, TikTok. and on Letterboxd, I am Mike KFR. And I am Glenn KFR. And I just, I lost track of where I was in that, so. And I, we'll talk to you next time when we talk about dead birds and confederacy and stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Butcher this ending. <laughs> Bye-bye. It's spooky. <laughs>